called the ActV Sequencer. So it's a piece of software, the ActV Sequencer. And I start it up and I say I want to create a new package. It then basically sits there and monitors it. And I install the application. Now the key thing here is that we do have this virtual file system that overlays the real OS, um, its file system. But to be the most efficient, to avoid any possibility of conflicts, what I actually have on this sequence, guys, I have my hard drive and I have my C, but I also have a second partition. Normally it's Q. And when I run my setup program, when I select the installation location, I actually point to a folder under Q. So if I was installing Word, I may say word.v14 or something, if it was the latest version. I still try and stick to the 8.3 naming convention, again, just for maximum supportability. So I actually install the application onto that Q drive. Now, we're still going to write certain things to C, and that's fine. The virtual file system will handle it. I just want to avoid it if I can. So as much as possible, I'm going to install to this folder. And I tell it, hey, I'm installing the app to the Q drive. So it runs the setup, it installs the application. Once it's complete, I may want to update that application. Um, I may want to go to online update, maybe add new features, maybe do some configuration of ODBC or printers, whatever. And then launch it. I want to run it a couple of times. So any initial setup prompts you get, I get at this stage while it's installing. I want to get it basically ready to just run in a normal mode. Once that's complete, I basically tell the sequencer to stop monitoring. And it goes away and it says, okay, well, what changed on the file system? What changed in the registry? Okay, understand that. Here's what we've done. And then we'll actually say, okay, now I want you to launch the applications. So, so far on the sequencer, basically it has a, a big blob, a big blob of data that was the file system, registry, etc., etc. And that might be, I mean, if, if this was Office, this could be 500 megs. What it wants to know is, well, out of this 500 megs, what do I really need to get to the desktop so they can launch the application? So what actually happens now is we say, okay, well, launch the application. So it goes and starts up Word. And it says, well, I needed this bit of the file, I needed this bit of the virtual registry, this bit of the virtual file system. These are all the bits I pulled just to launch that initial Word application, the features that I say are important. So it tracks that. And all of those bits that it needs to initially launch actually become a called feature block one. It basically sticks it all at the start, and that's feature block one. Everything else is feature block two. And this stuff is kind of pulled more on demand. It might be the word art or the other stuff. But this is the guy. And this might be 10% of the total package size, which is pretty common. Which means when I want to virtualize an app and run it on the end user, they click Word. The first time they run it, it only has to pull down that 50 meg and it's open. In the background, it can pull down the rest of it. Anyway, a little bit ahead. So I run it, it detects what it needs to start. Um, I then close it and it basically saves this project away. It, um, it creates an SFT file, which is really all of these virtual layers, all of this information here creates an OSD file, which is really an XML description of, hey, this is where this application is going to live, um, these are the things it ties into, a list of icons, etc. It creates this whole package. So to actually use this thing, I import that package into my AppV server. Now, there are a number of different infrastructures available with AppV. There is just standalone. And with standalone mode, when I sequence that application, I essentially just select create an MSI file. So it creates an MSI file with that SFT, the OST file in it. And I would just install that directly on clients. I would push it out with uh, SCCM or group policy. So it doesn't require any AppV infrastructure. I'm just pushing an MSI file that happens to have a virtualized app in it. The next mode is kind of like a light mode. 
And in the light mode, I, I have some server that's hosting the content, but it could be something called an AppV streaming server um, that supports the RTSP, the real-time streaming protocol, or it could be an IIS box supporting HTTP, HTTPS, or it could just be a file server. And at that point, the way it works is the clients have the OSD file and the icons delivered to them through some other method. So it, again, it could be group policy. Pushes down, there's no arm in group policy. Pushes down the OSD and the icon configuration. So it gives them just those main starter files. And then when I try and launch the OSD, it pulls down the SFT file content from the IIS box, etc. So it's still streaming it, but I don't have a full infrastructure in place from a management perspective. This guy is not dynamically discovering, hey, all of these applications are available. Something else has to tell him about the applications, and then he can go and stream them down. Then we get into a full infrastructure, and the full infrastructure is we have an AppV management server. And this actually has a client discovery protocol. And now, the client actually goes and asks the AppV box, hey, what applications are available for me? And he says, well, here you go, here's these OSD files, here's these icon files and here's the associations you're going to need and they just appear on this desktop, appear on this start menu and then when I click it, it pulls it down from my AppV server, my AppV streaming server think of an AppV streaming server, think maybe we put out a branch it can't do the management but it just allows me to stream using RTSP to my clients and then it's up and running, so again on this guy I've just got the AppV client and that's the guy that's providing that virtual environment, those bubbles, for the apps to actually work. So one question that often comes up is, well, okay, um, how do the applications work? I mean, if they can't talk to the underlying operating system. So we have our bubble. And we have our application. And then within that, we have our virtual file system, virtual registry, etc., etc. So we, within the bubble, we have configuration areas, registry, etc. So it's the config. And then outside the bubble, we have our real operating system. So we have the registry, etc. I can read through this way. So that works fine. I can still interact and read from the underlying operating system. Then we get into other sites of services. Um, Olay. Cut and paste. Um, things like that, uh, com, fonts, etc, etc. So here, I also have a virtual version of this, but these can actually communicate with each other. So I can actually go and actually interface with the cut and paste and the Olay of the operating system. Otherwise, I won't be able to copy anything from virtualized app to another virtualized app or the OS. So there is some interaction between those type of services. And then we get the user's data, the profile, their documents, and again, we have a virtualized view, but that can read and write, for example, their documents and settings.